don't know what time it is. Let's have a look. It's half past two in the morning. I don't know who's watching, but if you are, good. We're much more interesting than the Clinton-Trump debate. This is much more interesting. Uh, we've uh, come down from the Royal Surrey now to uh, the uh, south coast. We're in Brighton where we're at the Phase 1 project, which is a very interesting project, and the project leader is... is there he is. There he's got got it. Come, and, come and stand here so we can see how lovely you are. Uh, and your first name is... It's Paul. It's Paul, right. Paul, tell us about this very interesting project. Um, so, Phase 1 is a 52-bed homeless hostel um, for single homeless clients. We're a mixed hostel work with uh, complex needs clients for up to two years is a, is a general length of stay. Um, it's a, an absolutely amazing project. Um, very, very lucky to have a, an incredibly skilled staff team working with us, uh, providing ongoing support and general counselling to our clients. Lots of really positive partnership work going on in the city as well, which hopefully, uh, you know, the aim of the project is to be aspirational, to work with our clients through some very complex support needs. but mainly with the end goal of seeing them um, become more independent and move on from So the they'll move on, so you'll have clients here who've got drug and alcohol problems, yep. uh, perhaps been in trouble with the authorities Absolutely. or what have you, just yep. chaotic fractured lives, yep. mental health problems, yep. yeah. so will they be still in the care of the NHS for their mental health issues or substance misuse? Um, absolutely, I mean I think that this is one of the key things for us and our links to the NHS um, are incredibly strong actually. We've recently uh, been working with the Homeless Health Team, we now have a partnership with them so that is delivering primary care to our clients mm -hmm. at the point of contact at the, at the hostel. Many of our clients have had Differing experiences of, of NHS care yeah. um, and one of the great things about the homeless health team is that we have podiatrists, we've got um, grade 6 nurses, we've got uh, OTs working with us as well so actually when, it, when, in, when we talk about clients health it's probably one of the most important support needs that we yeah, physical, first deal yeah, with. Physical health, physical and, health right. physical health and the mental Community health mental side health by support. side. Absolutely, so it's, they're not, it's all about getting that So they're right dealt first. with it, it, as well, the physical needs and the mental health needs are dealt as one. Yes. Which is really the, the holy grail, isn't it? Because we're it trying to do that across the rest of the NHS at Absolutely. the moment. So uh, is it all men uh, here? It's a mixed hospital. Mixed, right. Does that ever cause you problems? I think it's a, it's a perfect way of um, you know creating a community mm. that's very very similar to society. Yeah. Many of our clients are marginalised, but also you know I think it's important that the project uh, having both men and women living here is that it it reflects what society is like. Yeah. We also. But, and what about how do they? I mean, they. So what happens during the day? They sleep here. There's a hostel. Do they do, do they yeah. have jobs? Some of the. Uh, some of our clients work. Some are doing voluntary work. Some are in education. Mm -hmm. um, the real aim of the project is to support clients in coming out of chaos, getting support from the agencies that they need support from, um, for us to think holistically about what they need. So. Health being one thing, but also mm. social aspects. What about referrals? Do people self-refer, or are they refer? To All of our referrals come from the local authorities. Yeah. So, so when no we arrived referral. tonight, there was a guy sitting on the doorstep. I think he was hoping to get in. It yeah. might be one of our clients having yeah. a um, having a bit of uh, time outside. Oh, I see. So people can come and go freely. Mm -hmm. It's it's a service that's open twenty four seven, three hundred and sixty five days of the year. So they could come in now. Absolutely. And there wouldn't be any reasons or ask why. Or what about do they eat here as well? They do. We provide two meals a day and do breakfast and an evening meal. Yeah. Make sure it's nutritious, uh, yeah. home cooked food. And who 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 funds? It's a really interesting project. Who funds this? We are funded by um, housing related support, so that's through um, local authority and local government. Mm. Um, so that's part of uh, the money that we get. The other is is uh, generated through rent rental income. Mm -hmm. And and that will be through the council, Geoffrey. Yes. Right, this is <laughs> Geoffrey Bowden, uh, who's a former uh, councillor, Geoffrey Bowden, uh, who uh, unfortunately lost his seat, mate, didn't you? I had a Democratic kick in the arse. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and you... And you're a former councillor, too. Uh, you're both former <laughs> councillors, really. But mine was in... Mine was spent you back in the 1980s. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so mine too. When, yeah. when, this, place, oh, yes. when yeah. this place was the most run-down, flea-and-rat-infested bubble in the city, it wasn't... 
part of Brighton Housing Trust in those days, but um, I used to do work with the local coroner. And this address was represented more often than any other address in the city. There was an average of three deaths here in this building a year mm. um, through uh, natural causes, through homicide, through suicide, through drug overdoses. We've been managing it now since 2002. And in that time, we've had a total of three deaths. Um, it shows what can happen if a place is run properly with good leadership, offered by people like Paul. Um, where uh, safety is of a paramount mm. importance, where we look at primary and secondary health care. It's very needs. much in the news, isn't it? The safety of mental health. Absolutely, uh, and it can work. It can mm. really work and make a difference. And mm. so the fact that we work with the most chaotic and most vulnerable people in the city, um, the people who are almost, in, you can expect to be represented in the, the worst of the statistics, mm. um, it shows what can be done mm. if it's properly resourced and if people get the right care attention and it's the right, as I say, the right leadership in this. And Jeffrey, were, were the council willing partners in this? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I visited this uh, establishment before and I've met some people whose lives have absolutely been transformed, you mm. know, from having totally chaotic lifestyles to actually becoming mm. part of the structure in here mm. and taking on responsibility and then going out and fulfilling their potential. Mm. In I was going to ask general. you who's your most successful success story? Well, I, I think if, if you, we, we employ all our different services, uh, around 250 people. We run about 15, 16 different services uh, in Brighton for uh, homeless people, people with addictions, mental health problems, etc. Um, uh, around a quarter of our staff are former clients who've gone away, got experience, got a professional qualification. When we meet for the first time, the two bits of information we usually share with each other is our name and what we do. But I think too many organisations um, label their clients by a problem. That they say, this is Mary, she's got an addiction, this is John, he's got a mental health problem. Rather than say, look at what mm -hmm. the, um, the, 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 the potential is a person. It's throughout if, the NHS, this is, this is Fred, he's a broken leg in that's right. bed four. Yeah. Yeah. But if I had met you tonight and said, hi, I'm Andy, I'm type 2 diabetic, mm. you would look at me as I'm rather strange. You know, mm. I said, hi, I'm Andy, I'm from Brighton Housing Trust. Mm. And that's what we have to do. We have to look at the potential that people have and make sure that we work with them in an appropriate way and an appropriate place to bring about that change. And that goes for, you, you talked about nutritious food. Let's start off by looking at balanced meals. Very often charities like ours rely on handouts. And so you get a street homeless person who goes to point A to point B to point C. And because someone has donated chocolate bars to all of them, they get a really rounded meal of <laughs> chocolate bars <laughs> everywhere they go. And so what we're looking at now is looking at how all the different organizations together can look at what is a healthy diet. And if we can start there, just by making sure that people get a decent, rounded diet each, each meal time, and then we can look at some of the other issues that have brought them on the street, help them up there, but also that transition to, to normal living, because ultimately, we don't define, I don't define myself by being type 2 diabetic, mm. I define myself by the work I do, my social setting, my relationships, the fact that I'm a parent, um, and that's what we've got to actually support and assist our clients to, mm. to do. It's a really interesting story. So there you are. I don't know where you're watching this. Well, let's have a look. It's uh, 20 to 3. You're probably up. You're either an insomniac, um, an absolute fan of the Academy of Fabulous Stuff and wondering what we're doing for 24 hours, <laughs> or you're working. But whatever it is, interesting story. That's what's going on whilst we're generally a kit. Thank you for watching.